Hello, my dear audience. This video is about a restaurant that was demolished almost 30 years ago, and only a handful of photos do exist. But with the help of John Lautner's original drawings and a scale model, I created a walkthrough. So let's take a closer look. In the 1950s, John Lautner made a few designs for the Henry's Restaurant Company. All of these buildings are demolished today and there's little information available about the history. They were all beautiful restaurants, but there was one design that was truly exceptional. The Henry's located in Pomona. This building had a futuristic looking roof that sheltered not only the kitchen and dining area, but also the parking lot. The oval shaped wooden roof was constructed in a very unique way. The first step was the placing of four large concrete pillars that were placed at the beginning and at the end of the roof. The four pillars were supporting a construction of large wooden beams that consisted of two ridges in the middle with steel supporting arms between them. Many curving beams were connected to these two ridges. And because the ridges were also curving, most of the pressure was distributed towards the concrete pillars. With the remaining pressure distributed over the curving arms towards thin steel pillars at the end of the arms. The entire construction was made of laminated wood in which multiple layers of curving wood board were glued together. John Lawner would later use glue laminated beams in different designs, but here he did it for the first time. Glue lamp beams were a novelty in the 1950s and Henry's Pomona was one of the first buildings in the world constructed with these materials, making it a revolutionary design. Smaller construction arms were placed between the curving beams creating a skeleton on which the roof plates were placed. Not the entire skeleton was covered with roof plates. At the south side, the first few lines of the roof structure were left open, forming a trellis above the entrance. Originally, the roof part at the northeast was also left open, creating a beautiful roof structure above the parking lot. However, in later years, this part of the roof was fully enclosed. The great benefit of the roof construction was that walls or internal pillars were no longer needed, allowing one large open space underneath, with floor-to-ceiling windows. Only the kitchen and toilets were placed in separated spaces. The restaurant was divided in three different sections without internal walls. There was a self-service diner with buffet tables, a lounge section with a cocktail bar and a cafe section. The large kitchen had two openings. One opening was towards the restaurant, while the other bar opened towards the parking lot that could hold 25 cars and was almost half the size of the entire building. Here you see the roof construction in correspondence with the floor plan. The unique shape of the restaurant made it easily recognizable from a high altitude. We start our tour here at the driveway. From the driveway we approach the restaurant. Next to this planter was a small pathway underneath the roof like a porch. From here we take a peek through one of the windows in the rear. We walk further around the restaurant and go through the entrance, which is a few steps above ground level. The curving roof beams were visible at the ceiling creating an interesting perspective in the large open space. The restaurant had furniture that was typical for American diners, with built-in couches and non-removable tables. 
Here you see the half circular cocktail bar. And here is the cafe area, next to the kitchen. In the background you see the floor to ceiling windows. The structure at the ceiling continues at the other side of the glass, creating a strong interaction between interior and exterior. At the end of the cafe area was a service bar, with in the background the opening to the kitchen. Through these windows you could look at the cars that were parked in front of you. This is the opening of the kitchen from where customers could be served while sitting in their car. By placing the parking lot under the same roof, the inside was mixed with the outside, a common trademark by John Lautner. The parking space gave drive-by customers an inviting feeling, because they could literally drive in the building. This photo shows the partly skeletonized roof, while this picture is taken from the same angle, but then with the roof fully enclosed. I personally prefer the original version with the roof structure being visible, because it had a great perspective with a beautiful effect of light and shadow. The restaurant was perhaps one of John Lautner's best achievements, and John Lautner had a drawing of it hung on the wall of his office, which can be seen here in the background of this photo. So the obvious question is, why was such a beautiful building demolished? Well, despite being successful in the 1960s, the restaurant went bankrupt in the 1970s and the building fell into disrepair. It became too expensive to renovate and was therefore demolished in 1986. Today a complete new neighborhood is built on the grounds that once surrounded the restaurant, so the location is changed beyond recognition. Like Googie's coffee shop, this was an interesting and historical important building and it's a waste that these two restaurants don't exist anymore. I made a short video this time, but the available information was very limited. Still though, it was important to pay a tribute to this once beautiful design.